Hello everybody. Today I'm going to explain the second problem of the week, which is the problem A, division, from the code forces run 680, division 1. This problem also showed up in the division 2 version of this contest, where it was the problem C. In this problem, we have uh, three test cases, and in each test case, we have two integers, pi and qi. As far as you can see, pi is quite big while QI is also big, but not that big. And we need to find the greatest, greatest integer XI, such that PI is divisible by XI, and XI is not divisible by QI. In other words, PI has to be a multiple of XI, and, X, and XI can't be a multiple of QI. And we need to create an algorithm which solves us the problem fast enough. At the first glance, one may find the divisors of pi and then check each of them manually if uh, they are not uh, multiple of qi but pi is quite big up to 10 to the 18 and uh, even if we are using faster versions of the square root algorithm since we actually have to find all the divisors we wouldn't uh, be able to solve the problem fast enough because that would be too costly. So now I'm going to try another to explain another approach, which is an approach based on dealing with QI. And in order to do this, we need to find some observations. Now, one can easily observe that if PI is not a multiple of QI, which is namely if the reminder when we divide pi at qi is not zero, then the answer is always going to be pi. Because pi is a multiple of pi, and pi is not a multiple of qi. So this uh, makes the problem easier, because we only have to deal with the case when pi is a multiple of qi. What does this imply, however? This implies that uh, when we are writing the prime factors of uh, pi and qi, all of the prime factors in qi are going to show up in pi and also at bigger powers. I'm going to explain this using an example. Let's say we have 12 and 6. 12 is equal to 2 at the second times 3 and 6 is equal to 2 times 3. As you can see, the same factors show up. If instead of 12, we would have had 60 or some other integer such that we are new prime factors, the same property stays, except uh, those prime integers don't show up in the smaller number. Now, how are we going to decrease the bigger number by such an amount so that uh, it's no longer a multiple of the smaller one? So pi has to be decreased in order to not make it a multiple of qi. Well, there are plenty of approaches one can try, such as a backtracking approach on the prime factors or other approaches as well. But uh, most of the approaches which deal with uh, removing uh, an arbitrary set of prime factors are either too slow or too complicated. And this is not the purpose of this video, since I'm going to always try to explain the least complicated solutions, which are correct, obviously. Now, one can observe that if we want to make the bigger number to no longer be a multiple of the smaller number, we can just uh, reduce the prime factor of one prime number. So let's say instead of 12, we can either make it 3, 3 times 2 at 0, or we can actually make it also 4 by reducing it to 2 at the second times 3 at 0. Both of these numbers are not multiples of 6, and they are eligible. So this is 3, and this is 4. And we obviously have to print 4. Now, how to actually figure this out? We will use the observation from the statement. QI is uh, up to 10 to the 9. 
So this means that we can actually find all the prime factors of qi in square root of n, or in this case, square root of qi, which is good enough. And uh, for each of these prime factors, we are going to try and find out how much do we have to trim from the bigger number such that it will no longer be multiple of the smaller number. And this is what I am doing in the source code. So here I'm uh, reading the input. And before I read the input, I clear a vector which will always have the prime factors which show up in Q. And firstly, if PI is not a multiple of QI, we are going to print PI. Otherwise, as I said, we are finding the prime factors of QI, but instead I keep a copy so that uh, we don't uh, affect QI because we will need it later. And uh, one should be careful because after finding the first prime factors, we may end up having one more. And this is quite an important advice, especially for the visibility tasks. And uh, this variable will tell us the smallest uh, factor by which we have to divide pi, such, such that we get to the answer. And at the beginning, I made it pi because uh, one is always going to be an answer, because qi is at least two. Now, for each prime factor, I'm computing the difference between the exponent at which uh, that prime factor shows up in pi and qi and I'm computing the difference. Like if we have two at the fourth, which is 16, and two at the second, which is four, then the di that difference is going to be eight because we have 16 divided by four, which is four. And we also have to cut one more two in order to make it smaller. And this is what I'm actually doing it here. Some while loops and uh, these run actually pretty fast because there are few factors and also the exponent is small as well. I hope you enjoyed watching and as always I invite you to watch uh, the other videos I have on the channel and also watch the problem of the week playlist because it needs much love from you guys in order to actually make it a popular series. And before the next time, stay safe, good luck and goodbye.